Kenyans, this is Teacher Sara, and today we are going to discuss simple and compound interest. This video tutorial is based from your learning activity sheets in general mathematics, quarter 2, week 1. So bring out your learning activity sheets and turn your learner's module to pages 135 to 143. Our learning targets are illustrate simple and compound interests. Distinguish between simple and compound interests. Before the lesson, let us have some warm-up questions. I have some questions for you to answer. First question. Express 12% to decimal. Time starts now. Excellent. The answer is 0 0.12. Second question. Express 0 0.005 to percent. Time starts now. Excellent. The answer is 0.5%. Who among you deposit money on the bank or lend money? on the bank or in any lending institution. So, depositing money in a bank is like lending money to the bank in return for which the bank pays interest. By contrast, borrowing money from banks or lending institutions requires payment of interest. In this module, we will study the different type of interest. Before we proceed to our new lesson, let us recall converting percent to decimal and vice versa, just like the warm-up questions that I'll give you a while ago. So, rules in converting percent to decimal. To convert a percent to decimal, drop the percent sign and move the decimal point two places to the left. When the number in the percent is a whole number, the decimal point is understood to be stated at the right at the last digit. For example, to convert 12% to decimal, drop the percent sign and move the decimal point two places to the left to get 0 0.12. To convert 1 half percent to decimal, convert 1 half first into decimal and that is equal to 0 0.5 and then follow the rule in converting percent into decimal thus one half percent equals 0 0.5 percent or in decimal that is equal to 0 0.005 rules in converting decimal to percent move the decimal point to places to the right to convert 0 0.025 to percent, move two decimal places to the right to get 0 0.025 is equal to 2.5 percent. So let us first study some uh, terms related in our lesson. Lender or creditor is a person or institution who invests the money or makes the funds available. Borrower or debtor is a person or institution who owes the money or avails of the funds from the lender. Origin or loan date, the date on which money is received by the borrower. Repayment date or maturity date, the date on which the money borrowed or loan is to be completely repaid. Time or term is the amount of time in years the money is borrowed or invested. 
length of time between the origin and maturity dates. Principal is the amount of money borrowed or invested on the origin date. The rate, refer to annual rate, usually in percent, charged by the lender or rate of increase of the investment. The interest is the amount paid or earned for the use of money. Simple interest, interest that is computed on the principal and then added to it. Compound interest is computed on the principal and also on the accumulated fast interest. Maturity value or future value is the amount after T years that the lender receives from the borrower. When using a property owned by another person, you sometimes need to pay an amount as a fee. For example, you pay rent for the use of a house. You also pay a toll for the use of, of a private road. The same is true for the use of money. How much do we pay for the use of money? Note that money borrowed from one person is money lent or invested by another. Thus, the interest paid by the borrower is seen as a form of income by the lender. For example, a bank offers a cash loan for an annual interest rate of 6%. Mr. De La Cruz borrowed 50,000 pesos from the bank. After 3 years, Mr. De La Cruz paid the bank a total of 59,000 pesos. Here, the principal, which represents fee, simple, amount is 50,000 while the annual interest rate represent R is 6% and the interest which represent a symbol I paid by Mr. De La Cruz is the extra 9,000 pesos on top of his 50,000 pesos loan for the duration or term of 3 years. So, for example, number two, suppose your father deposited in your bank account 10,000 pesos at an annual interest rate of 0.5%, compounded yearly when you graduated from kindergarten and did not get yet the amount until you finished grade 12. Here, the principal amount is 10,000 while the rate of interest is 0.005 compounded yearly and the duration or term is 12 years. Observe in the given example that interest can either simple or compound. In example 1, it shows that it is a simple interest while example 2 is a compound interest. Simple interest is a type of interest in which only the principal bears interest for the entire term. The amount of interest paid for its period remains the same. The following are situations applying simple interest. Example 1, Ms. Reyes invests 20,000 20, pesos in a savings account. She earns an interest of 5% or 1,000 pesos every month. After 4 months, she earned 4,000 pesos in interest. Example 2, an entrepreneur applies for a loan amounting to 500,000 pesos in a bank. The bank charges a 7% interest rate or 35,000 pesos annually. After two years, he paid 70000 for the interest alone. While for compound interest, it is a type of interest applied to both the original principal and the accumulated interest at the end of its period. This means that the amount of interest to be paid increases every period. So, following are situations applying compound interest. Example 1, 
Mrs. Flores invests 10,000 pesos in a stock portfolio that earns 5% interest monthly. Interest that is not withdrawn is considered as an additional investment. For the first three months, she earned 500 pesos, 525, and 551.25 in interest respectively, for a total of 1,576.25. For example, two, Peter borrowed 100,000 pesos at 8% interest rate annually. For the first two years, he paid 8,000 and 8,640 in interest, respectively, for a total of 16,640. Generally, simple interest paid or received over a certain period is a fixed percentage of the principal amount that was borrowed or lent while compound interest accrues and is added to the accumulated interest of previous periods. So, borrowers must pay interest on interest as well as principal. So, if uh, you are a businesswoman, so the compound interest is favorable with you because you earn more money with this type of interest but uh, if you are a borrower so a simple interest is favorable to you since you pay a lesser interest or lesser amount to return the money to one that you to the one that you can borrow that money Okay, after we finish to discuss the difference between the simple and the compound interest, this is your part to do your task. Reminder, do not write anything on this activity sheet. Write your answer on a separate long band paper. For enrichment activity 1, you analyze the following situation given, then you identify whether it shows simple interest or compound interest, and it gives you one point. For then for enrichment activity 2, refer to activity 1. In its given situation, you identify the principal P, the rate R, the simple interest I sub S or the compound interest I sub C and the term or T, then you copy the table on a separate sheet of band paper to write your answer. And for enrichment activity 3, answer the following questions given then write your answer on your answer sheet and it's give you five points each and for wrap up activity fill in the blanks with the correct words to show how much you have learned then write your answer also on your on your answer sheet it gives you additional point that should be added in your enrichment activity score. I hope you learned something today. If you have questions or clarifications regarding the topic we discussed, feel free to contact your subject teacher through text, call, or post your questions in your official Facebook group or page. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe.